Of course, if creepy behaviors were universal, we wouldn't define them the way we do today. However, for the citizens of the Empire, some customs of ancient Rome were as real to us as a frightful myth at the time. Drinking gladiator's blood or using urine for facial cleaning sound quite disgusting from where we stand today, right? We couldn't explain that the ancient Rome citizens considered the blood of gladiators sacred and divine values, other than religious beliefs and the way of life of the society. However, the vice versa situation we will encounter if we make a visit to those times. If we take our journey in those times, the vice versa situation will welcome us, even though ancient Rome is known for its medical and technological developments. Moreover, apart from bad hygiene habits, we can also witness some very interesting parties and overhear the superstitions of the locals during this visit. Let's see all of them in detail and get ready for an exact cultural shock when we go deep into the creepy universe of ancient Rome. First of all, the usage of urine was significantly present in ancient Rome. Given that it contains ammonia, it was a quick and efficient source of cleaning. Even the application was so common that urine was used by ancient Romans to wipe their faces and teeth. Upon this belief, it preserved their teeth white and bright. The areas aren't restricted only to these, of course. Taking the urine as a leading role for general cleaning, they also wash their clothes in urine, since ammonia is an effective cleaner for removing grease and filth. From the perspective of today, isn't this really interesting in a way that pushes the limits of our minds? The more importance can be attributed to the urine, the more ancient Romans did. The government imposed special taxes on the selling of urine, since the pee was so significant. Even urine shaped their hobbies. It can be said since urine collection was a common source of income for many individuals. In general, it may be said that the Romans did not practice good hygiene. They used a sponge instead of toilet paper on a stench. They divided the stick among themselves. One of the biggest problems in ancient Rome was hygiene. This problem affects even people's life, not only physically, but also psychologically. How couldn't it be when there is a chance of dying when you enter a Roman toilet? That is because ancient Roman toilets included many savage animals, such as rats, snakes, and spiders. These creatures might have bitten people and seriously hurt them. The decomposing sewage was also a threat to people. Fun fact is that people turned to magic to try to survive because toilets were deadly. The walls of toilets have been discovered to contain magical spells intended to ward off demons. However, several also had guardian sculptures of Fortuna, the goddess of fortune, on them. People would offer prayers to Fortuna before entering. The Romans also held the intriguing belief that drinking the blood of a fallen gladiator was beneficial for cleaning the body and spirit. Accordingly, with the divine attribution to glorious soldiers, they believed it would make them stronger and get them ready to prove their strength and boast about it. The magical cleaning power of gladiator blood also had beneficial physical effects on ancient Rome's people. It is believed that consuming gladiator's blood can treat a variety of illnesses, including epilepsy and infertility. Even numerous Roman medical professionals supported this treatment. Later, though, Rome outlawed gladiator fighting. Additionally, ancient's interest in gladiator blood was spread into beauty care routines. Women at the time utilized the death skin cells of gladiators as a face lotion, in the hopes that the gladiator skin cells would make them alluring to men. Women would apply the cream on their faces. Following up the party tradition, the commonplace meetings where eating and drinking mainly composed the main aim were significant social rituals in Roman culture. Roman upper-class citizens frequently participated in lavish all-day feasts. Due to their scarcity and high price, wild animals, birds, and fish were typically offered to the guests. As a complement to the dish, wine was also served during the meal. Rich Romans would deliberately make themselves throw up so they could continue eating these lavish dinners that lasted for hours. The disgusting Roman custom is known as the vomitorium, after the banquet was over, bowls were brought to the guest. When they had disposed of their dinner into these bowls, another banquet was served. In ancient Roman religion, phalluses were considered divine protection. The energy of these phalluses was thought to protect people from evil spirits, 
They were worn as charms or necklaces and considered good luck charms. Even babies and soldiers wore such for protection. It is also believed that this motif improves fertility. In Old Rome, the picture of the phallus was portrayed on entryway knockers, lights, wind chimes, and charms, as well as in mosaics and other embellishing surfaces. The sexual vitality of these pictures was accepted as secure individuals by conjuring the control of the god Fascinus. Pompeii is a great example of the most erotic artwork we could ever see. It includes walls carved with a penis, goats that are insulted by humans, and also prostitutes. For women in ancient Rome, pregnancy-related deaths were one of the leading problems at the time. Ancient Roman women, who were not wealthy and generally worked as prostitutes, needed to prevent pregnancy. They approached preventing pregnancy mostly because of poor living conditions. For that reason, giving birth to children was an obstacle in their lives and protection was vital to sustain their lives as it was. So to avoid pregnancy, they applied natural ways as a solution. One method of contraception was to smear the uterus with a mixture of olive oil, honey, or cedar resin. Also, white lead was another way of preventing pregnancy. Interesting solutions of ancient Romans continue to reach another level. But the fact that they don't have band-aids like we do today, they found a different way to patch up their wounds. People in Rome patched up their scrapes and wounds with goat dung. It is believed that the best goat dung was collected in spring. Moreover, fresh goat dung was used in emergency situations as well. Goat dung was either boiled in vinegar or ground into powder and added to drinks. One example is that charioteers drank it for energy. When they were worn out, it was a habitual preference for them to take a sip to get more energy. There's also a belief that left-handed people were considered untrustworthy and unlucky. But gladiators, who are left-handed, were considered special elements and they used more varied weapons and different fighting styles. Most soldiers used their right hands to hold their weapons. Well, this was until Julius Caesar made it law. Caesar was left-handed. For the last one, in ancient Rome, although suicide was socially acceptable at first, it was later considered as a crime against the state due to its economic costs. Rome had significant cultural contributions that have had big impacts on cultural legacies and heritage. Romans had an impact on several social groupings and communities that permeated generations after the Roman era. What we define as rudeness, creepy, or extremism changes over time, of course, depending on the period and culture. The ancient Roman Empire today is crowned with being the most relevant example of it through traditions that would contradict our understanding of modern society. The belief behind the behaviors of insulting hygienic manners brought health to human life at that time is an exact example for sure. Yet it is completely personal to thank God for not preferring to drink blood or use chemicals in our beauty routine rather than urine.